I used to work at a Chipotle. One day, I was working a super long shift from the afternoon right up until closing time. The day had its usual everyday customers with people rushing in and out. It was really busy for most of the time. At one point, I noticed there was a guy sitting by himself in the corner. I didn't think much of it until I saw him again a couple of hours later and he was still there. The guy was wearing sunglasses inside, but that was really the only thing about him that stood out to me. That and the fact that he wasn't eating anything. He wasn't on a laptop either, he was just looking around. It was sort of weird. As the day progressed and the rush hour hit, the man blended in with the crowd of people. Because of this, there were times that I didn't know if he was still there or not. I mean, I was busy working and not just watching the guy the whole time. The night went on and things settled down again. Eventually, it was time to close. I looked up and yet again, he was still there. I couldn't tell if he noticed me looking because of the angles and his sunglasses were so dimmed and the light reflecting made it nearly impossible to see what he was looking at. So what was crazy is that they chose me to go and kick this guy out who had been sitting there all day. I was super nervous, but I gathered my courage and went up to him. I walked out from behind the counter and over to the man in the corner. I said, um, excuse me, sir, and my voice totally gave away my nervousness. I told him that it was closing time, but he didn't say a word. He just stared at me through his sunglasses with this intense look that freaked me out. Then, in this really creepy silence, the guy slowly got up from his seat gave one last look around the restaurant, and left without saying a single word. My heart was pounding like crazy, and I had this weird feeling, but I tried to shake it off and tell myself it was all in my head. I had done it, and he was finally leaving. So me and my coworkers started doing our closing routine and cleaning up. The place was now empty. Two of my coworkers said their goodbyes and left, and it was just one other person and me left to finish everything. We focused on our tasks and mostly just cleaning. Then, out of the blue, there was this loud knocking on the front door that made us jump. The knocking kept getting louder and more insistent, like somebody really wanted to get in. Panic started to come back, and I went to go see who it was. When I did, I saw that it was the same creepy guy with shades. With shaky steps, I walked up to the door, my hand trembling as I reached for the doorknob. Deep down, I wanted to just ignore him, but I didn't. I was really curious as to why the man had returned. He knew that we were closed. I asked him what he wanted, and his reply was in the tone of a whisper. I left my wallet inside. I could barely hear him. But when I understood what he said, I assumed that he would just come inside, get his wallet, and then leave. I was about to open up the door, but I looked over at my coworker instead. She was shaking her head from behind the counter and mouthing for me to not let him in. She then started to walk over. As she did, she asked me what the man had been saying. I told her that he had left his wallet, and she asked me where the man had been sitting. I pointed over to the table in the corner, the same place where he was basically all day. The man then said, just let me in. My coworker looked all around the table and floor and said that there was no wallet there. I relayed that message to the man who insisted it was and knew exactly where. However, I chose not to let him in. I stepped away from the door as he stared at me. The man then suddenly ran off into the night. I went over and looked out the window and by then he was halfway across the parking lot. We searched very well, and there was certainly no wallet inside. I'm sure he was trying to trick us into letting him in, and then he would have done who knows what. It's been a while since this experience, and it still creeps me out every time I think about it. This happened about a year ago. It was around 9 p.m., and I was starving. I was craving Chipotle, and they were one of the only places still open. It was after 9 p.m., but the Chipotle didn't close until 10. I drove my SUV, the same car I've had since college, and parked a little ways away in the parking lot. As I pulled in, I saw that there were only two other cars there. I assumed they were likely the employees. This made me happy, and I knew that I wouldn't have to wait in line. I parked and then went inside. I ordered and was inside the restaurant for maybe a total of five minutes, probably less than that to be honest. Finally, with my burrito in hand, I headed back to my car. But as I approached it, some obvious fool had parked their car so close to mine that I couldn't even get into my driver's door. It would have been literally impossible. They were probably six inches from touching. I was really angry. I walked over to the other side of my car, which also had somebody parked on that side. But when I went to that side, I couldn't get in there as well. They were also parked way too close to me. I was wondering what was going on here. Both of the cars had tinted windows, and I couldn't really see inside. 
I decided to go over to the driver's door of the first car blocking me in. When I got over there, I looked in the driver's window and knocked on it. I soon saw, though, that nobody was in the driver's seat. This was really annoying me, and it was also slightly creepy. There were so many other parking spaces for them to go. It seemed like they were specifically trying to do this to me. As I walked back over towards my car, I heard doors opening. Then I saw two men coming out of the car on the other side of mine. They were large and dressed in all black. Immediately, I knew they were up to no good. I had a sudden idea, and I unlocked my car, then quickly opened the rear trunk door to the back of my car. I jumped inside of it, and with my keys in hand, hit the lock button. The guys reached the rear of my car in no time and started banging on it after trying to open it up. I jumped over my seat somehow until I had made it into my driver's seat. Then I started my engine. Obviously, I couldn't back up and was parked up against a curb. However, I did have four-wheel drive and it was an SUV, so I said screw it and hit the gas. The car surged forward and up the curb. I then went onto a little sidewalk and then into a bit of grass. I turned and was able to make it back into the parking lot and drove away from the guys. They stayed by their cars and did not bother chasing after me. This remains one of the most bizarre things to ever happen to me, and one of the scariest as well. Not sure what those men had in store for me, but I'm glad I don't have to find out. Before I tell this story, keep in mind that I'm an 18 year old girl that weighs as much as a piece of lettuce. I also don't have a fierce bone in my body, as I was never taught to handle problems with aggression growing up. So about a few weeks ago, after a crazy rush of people at Chipotle, things finally started to quiet down. I took the opportunity to go out and sweep the floors of the dining room so I could potentially get off early. It had been a really long day. Out of nowhere, this man walks into Chipotle, but instead of heading to order food, he makes a beeline straight towards me. He came up to me and said, a man outside asked me to give this to you. Then he handed me an envelope. I was really confused, thinking of how weird this was. The man then just walked away and out of the restaurant. Confused and slightly freaked out, I quickly walked into the back and opened the envelope. Inside, there was a note telling me to meet someone at the park that night at 8pm. I did recognize the name of the park. Now here's the thing, this park is just a short walk from my apartment. It's about at the end of the street. And to make things worse, the handwriting was incredibly nice. It was like something you'd see in the 1800s, and really nice cursive. Naturally, I got really freaked out by this whole situation, and I decided not to go. It just felt too risky. I was curious as to what would be at the park, but obviously didn't want to take any chances. That night, I didn't go, and nothing strange happened to me. But then, the very next day, I got this random text message from an unknown number who I assumed had something to do with the note the day before. The person was asking why I didn't show up at the park. I didn't want to engage with this person, so I ignored the message and blocked the number right away. Unfortunately, it gets worse. The following day, I found a note outside my apartment door, and it was from the same person. They were asking me why I blocked their number. Now I was questioning how they got my number and my address. I thought of all the people who could possibly be pulling a prank on me. I even asked a few people who I thought it might be possible with, but they all denied it. They all seemed genuinely concerned about my problem. And besides, how would that explain the random guy who walked into the Chipotle? I had never seen him before in my life. I was starting to feel like I was being watched or something, and it really freaked me out. At this point, I was thinking to myself that it couldn't get any worse, but it did. The next time I was at work, I had already been there for a few hours. I spotted this guy in a car outside, just sitting there and seemingly watching me. I really don't know how I noticed him, but I did. I had had enough. I figured that this guy had to do something with what had been happening, and I decided to tell my coworker who was working next to me at the time. His name is Ben, and when I told him how it seemed like the guy in the parking lot had been creepily watching me, and he was possibly stalking me as well, Ben sprung into action. This surprised me, but Ben almost seemed like he liked the idea of confronting this guy. He walked right out of the front doors of Chipotle. He marched over to the guy's car, but when he got maybe 20 feet away, the guy quickly backed up and drove off. After this encounter, I never saw the man again. I never got any more phone calls or notes either. I'm grateful to Ben for going to confront him, and I'm not sure who had been leaving me those notes or watching me, or what they wanted. I really think it was the guy in the car, and maybe he didn't know that I would see him watching me that day. I'm glad I never saw him again though.